Hey, what's up? My name is Samuel Leeds, and today I've got a very special guest who I'd like to interview, and this person has actually been on many of my financial freedom challenges, and they're going to be able to give you a special insight. I thought it'd be a great interview, so welcome to the, uh, welcome to the show. Okay, the, the reason no one's there is because the guy I want to interview is actually a very special guest because he's the guy that's on the other side of the camera. Pav, videographer Pav. So I don't know how we're gonna do this. Pav, could you maybe like leave the cameras for a bit and come on the, oh my goodness, Pav. All right, let's try it, let's try it. He's on the right side of the camera. Goodness gracious. Um, Pav, you've traveled with me. We've done multiple financial freedom challenges. How many How many challenges have you done with me? Um, London, Evans. London Financial Freedom Challenge. Evans, Evans. and David in Ireland. David in so Ireland. Free. Incredible. The David in Ireland one is just epic. And you, your footage. And the reason I think Pav is such a good videographer is because he just films everything. You know, and I'll forget you there. It's like fly on the wall. If, if, we're, if we're going into an estate agent, you'll hold it down as if you're taking pictures. So, you, so, you, so, so you'll be like, so I have to take some pictures, but then you'll just keep it here, but you're actually secretly filming. Or you'll get a GoPro if it's really secret. Like, you even, we, 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 we even have like almost spy pens, like things, you just the, the best secret videographer ever. Um, why don't you give a little bit of background as to who you are, who is the man behind the camera, and, and then I'll maybe ask you some questions and we can get a bit of an insight for what it's like being on the road, traveling, and, and, and different things. So who is Pav? Pav is the master spy cam, as you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even, even when I was filming the eviction as well, the guys also noticed that, like, you know, they're, they're painting and they're like, oh, here is Pav, you know, yeah. like, I'm, I'm just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, so my name is Pavel, Pav, shortly. I remember the first day in the office, yeah. uh, you came. I was like, oh my God, Samuel Leeds. I'm like, hey, wait, my name is Pavel. And you're pa 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 Pavel, Pavel. And then we had a circle like, to introduce the new guys. And we're like, hey, I'm Pavel. You can call me Pav. And you, and you jump in like, oh my God, why did you make me struggle with your name? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were like, Pavel. And I was like, what, uh -huh, what? And then when you told everybody else, you're like, I'm Pav. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> Yeah. How long have you been with the co couple years? Uh, year and a half. September was one year, yeah. so year and a half, About year stuff, and a half. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, okay, cool. So one of the things your nickname we call you Curious Pav. Yeah. Curious Pavel because you are interested in stuff. Um, you were interested in property, and I think that's how, I think that's how you got the job in the first place because you've been watching me a little bit. I'm not really sure. Actually. Yeah, I, I basically I like to ask questions, and uh, I when I don't know something, I just ask it. I, that that's how, in a way, the brand came or, came along. Uh, but it, it's so funny because I was in the videography field in London, and I just got this job as a because I knew somebody who was in that in that case was Raf. And it was so funny because I was interested in property way before I went to John Lee's trainings, I went to Rich Dad's training, I went to a few other trainings. And I never heard about you, but when I started to research a bit more. And I just or just type stuff in property on YouTube. You came along, and then two months after that, I was working for you. It was crazy. And Raf, after we have to give credit to Raf because he linked us together. Yeah. Uh, top guy. Yeah. Uh, does a lot of videography work for people like Gary Vaynerchuk and Warren Buffett. So okay, cool. So started working. I remember the first time we ever worked together. It was a bit of a gamble when <laughs> London. Yeah. Right. That was the first time. What happened? So what happened was it was probably I was it was my first week. I think, it definitely my first week. Uh, and Raf was supposed to film the challenge, but Sarah comes in the office where the video guys are, and is like, oh guys, you know, we're supposed to film today, but Raf can't make it. Who wants to film? And I just look around, everybody like, you know, and I'm like, I'll do it. And Sarah was like, really? I mean, you just started, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do it, give me the challenge. And then I remember she, uh, she came after that, and she said that, uh, that she came to you, and it's like, okay, you know, Pav's gonna film you, and you're like, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know, I'd, uh, I'd, for I'd forgotten, because uh, you, you were so new, and, and, and you know, there was like maybe 40 members of staff all around, so um, six videographers, um, you good know. Good times, good times. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Buzzing office in London, now everyone's working from home, and everything's, everything's a little bit different, but so, so, and I literally, I'm like, right, we're gonna do a, fi a financial freedom challenge, which is 12 hours to find a deal, in London from scratch. Um, from your perspective, 
Like, is, is, is it as it seems? Because people might watch the actual documentary and think, how, how much of this might be maybe set up or maybe even, you know, is this, is this real life or is this um, scripted? You know, and, and people sometimes don't quite realize um, you're the videographer. Tell us what it's like and what actually happens. What's the reality behind the cameras? It's, it's I mean, if people think it's scripted, for them it's going to be scripted. I mean, because it's, it's filmed and edited, you can never be sure. But from my side, it's, it's really a rea reality. I mean, I can say it's reality. I'm not sure if people believe me, but it's reality. Because even when people were stopping you on the streets, we got that, not because we rehearsed it like, oh, oh, oh can, can we just do it again? But because I was filming everything, as you said, that's how we got these things. So all these things, it, it's reality and it's really cool to see it. Uh, happening in front of yeah, you. Yeah, and even like when we did the Evans one, the whole thing with the apartment, and it, it, it almost seems too good to be true how, how easily everything slots, you know, like, like the fact that the guy who, Evans is like, oh, this is my dream apartment, and it just turns out that the, guy, the agent is a fan of mine. Yeah. And then when I get there, and Evans is like, this is my dream apartment, and then the guy is like, oh, Samuel Leeds, it, it, it feels like, this almost people are going to think this is a freaking staged set up thing, you know, but, but it really isn't. Well, what can you do? You cannot do anything more. If, if I didn't film that when he came like, oh, are you Samuel Leeds? Then if we need to repeat it, his reaction was going to be the same. Yeah. Most people were, you know, it would be difficult to act anyway. Yeah. So. And all of the deals, like, you know, the island one, I, all right, you tell me this. Did I even hand on heart know that we were outside of the UK when we got to David's house? <laughs> this guy doesn't know what's in his travel bag, <laughs> let alone where is he traveling. <laughs> it's true, man. I, I remember, remember we were going, where were we going? We were flying with Amelia somewhere and we, we passed security and we're walking to the gate and you're like, oh, where's my suitcase? So they, they hold your suitcase to check stuff in it. And you just completely forgot that you left. <laughs> You're just walking like, oh, where's my suitcase? Oh, I, you need to go yeah. back. Yeah. Oh, I, and with the financial freedom challenges, like oh, I usually don't know that they're coming until a couple days before anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that it's coming in the background, yeah. but I don't know when I'm going to be free. So it's like, all right, I've promised I'm going to do a financial freedom challenge with David. Cool. David, I'll come at some point. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's messaging me, Puff, what's happening? When are you coming? Like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, I'm like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty free the next few days. I've got two appointments. I can probably cancel. You know what? Puff, are you free tomorrow? <laughs> You're like, that, that, that's the vibe though, right? Yeah, usually it's like that. You know, that's the vibe. So, okay, what is, um, what's, been, what's, what's been some of the highlights of, of the trips and stuff that we've done together? For me, highlights is I got to see the things happening firsthand. So I get to see things that are not mentioning videos, like little details about property stuff. So these are the biggest highlights for me. I, I learned also, one of the things I learned from you is uh, these three questions. Are you earning, are you learning, and are you enjoying yourself? And to be fair, this is a really win-win-win for me because I'm learning new things, mainly about property. Um, I'm enjoying myself because I meet new people and I travel around, and I'm earning a bit as well. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I mean, we, we pay our videographers. No, it's really, really decent amount. Yeah, it's decent amount. We don't try and pay the lowest we can. You know, we pay very reasonable, yeah. good salaries. Uh, not just to our videographers, but to all of our staff. Well, I, I don't know for the rest, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. um, you've also um, written a book. I did. What's that called? It's called How to Talk to Strangers. What made you write that book? It was pandemic times, and I already had an online course on that subject. And I was like, you know, it's, it's, we were on furlough, and uh, I didn't have, it. I don't like to stay on, on one spot for a long time. And I was like, let's do something. And I remember but when I was in, in high school, I had a friend who told me like, one day I'm gonna write a book. And I was thinking like, you need to write so many pages, then you need to look how are you gonna distribute it, where are you gonna place it, it's so much work. Nowadays, you just write it on a Word document and you just post it around. You, you just upload it to Amazon and that's it, they do the marketing. They do. I'm like, why not? So you can call yourself an author really easily these days. Yeah. So you are an author? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing a second one. Which, which what's, that, what's that gonna be? How to be happy. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Really important topics, though. Yeah, because I think I have a lot to share. I think I'm really genuinely happy person. I have a lot to share, and it's really not... I, I think, as you know, if you know something, 
you know, share it with the world. Don't keep it to you. Another question as well. How does this fit? Because sometimes people, um, people think that I am anti-jobs, and I'm not. I don't. I, <laughs> not. I'm not anti-jobs at all. In fact, most millionaires have a job. So you know, I'll say, I'll say to my staff, you know, hey, having a job as long as you as long as you enjoy it and as long as you're paid decent, but and especially if you've got opportunities to to grow on, there's no problem having a job. You are sat behind the camera every freaking week with someone on Winners on a Wednesday talking about how, and then, ha ha, I got out of my job. Yay, you got every week, and you're behind the camera being empl employed, having a job. Yeah. What's the thought process and the, you know, what's the psychology and the rationale behind that? Um, I'd love to just hear your, you know, different perspective. So, so my perspective is in the last, probably three, four years, uh, I really got, I really developed that thinking like don't put all your eggs in one basket. So I was always having this side thing. I was either flipping stuff on eBay, I was doing walking tours, I was doing videos for companies, and it was all the time one salary and then stuff on the side. Now, uh, as you know, but probably the audience doesn't know, but I am planning to start my own things. And then when I said that to you, you were super supportive. You're like, oh man, I understand. You know, life has its seasons. You, that, those were your exact words. Life has its seasons. And it's, it's for me, you know, it depends. If, if there's other videographer and they're okay with the job, like, okay, you know, they're just doing their job. But to me, I feel it's, it, I wanna try to do it myself. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's yeah. So you're 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 now you're now beginning to set up um, your own company, which we're like fully behind. Um, I don't think sometimes you can. Sometimes you can't. You can't do like a job like this is so full on mm -hmm. working for working for the you know yeah. Samuel Leeds Limited. So full on trying to do different things and stuff. It's it's hard. You can't really do. It. It's like a conflict sometimes. Um, but at the same time, if we've got someone in the office that's like, "Man, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to," we will encourage them to leave. We'll be like, and a lot of people have. You know, you're you're pro pro looking like one, one of those people now, which is great. There's no problem. But I think employers that have um, the mindset of trying to keep everybody clawed into their kind, like, like we, I, I've never been that way. For me, I'm about releasing people, sending people off. Um, and I think that, I, th I think that's really important. I think that's a, an important part of the culture of our company. Yeah, I think the true boss is not being a boss and dictating and giving commands. The true boss is working, having a job as working for the employees. And I think you are that type of person. Yeah, I, I think I work as much for you as yeah. you work for me. Like how I see it is you're, um, and in fact, Gary Vaynerchuk says this, which is brilliant. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about how you're actually there to serve yeah. your staff, mm -hmm. not the other way around, which I think is, I think it's beautiful because it's like, you know, and I, look, I'm not perfect and, and I've got many mistakes and, and everything. But for me, you know, I think you should, I, I'll regularly find myself asking, my staff, how can I help? What do you need support with? You know, so I'm not claiming to be the perfect, um, the perfect leader or director or anything like that. But what's it like generally? What's it like working with the team, working with me so closely? Because videographers are one of the few people that get to work with me very close. The accountants, I mean, we've got full-time accountants, admin, finance, customer service. They don't speak to me very much. Mm. They can, I'm, I'm here, and I'll speak, to, I'll check in with them at times, but videographers, Every day, like, what's it like working super closely with me? It was so funny. I remember when I first got your phone number. I'm like, I went home to my girlfriend. Look, I got Simon's number. Like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. it, it was crazy. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I think you understand how important it is to have, you know, good video and all these things. And that's why I think you're working so close with the videographers. And I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. that. Makes me, you know, brings me closer to you and gives me extra insights on how you're thinking. So for me, it's great. The eviction. Yes. What happened with the eviction? Oh, man. <laughs> so let's... Because people wouldn't believe it, would they? From, from the beginning, I remember because, uh, as I told you, I like to do other things. And at that time, you know, and still doing, I'm teaching online how to do videos, you know, people from around the world. Yeah. And I remember till the last moment, because we weren't sure, are we gonna go with it? What are we gonna do with it? So the plan was we meet at the hotel, we're gonna tell them, what was it? We, we lay it off for a week or we cancel it or yeah. whatever it we is. We schedule it till next year. And we are in the car driving to the airport and I see my schedule and like the next two days, you know, I have two classes, right? 
And I'm like, Samuel, is this canceling? Shall I, shall I take these classes? And you're like, yeah, yeah, we cancel it. Yeah, take that, no problem, no problem. <laughs> I take the classes, <laughs> we go to the venue, <laughs> people are lining up, they're coming up, people are coming up, they're about to enter the room, and you're like, no, no, actually, let's do it. Let's do it now. Let's go, come on. We can do that first challenge now, and we can, let's do it now. And I'm like, well, okay, cancel, <laughs> cancel. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, I, that's so funny, because what happened was, we had the eviction, I told 12 people, the month of November is the eviction. Yeah. Come on down, 1st of November, and we'll start. But then, the day before, we went into a full national yeah. lockdown. I'm like, how are we gonna do the eviction during a lockdown? We can make it happen. All my advisors, you know, everybody's like, Samuel, we forbid you from running the eviction. You have to cancel it, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? I, I know that people have come from, like David had come from Ireland. Yeah. I can't just message everybody and say it's cancelled. So I thought what we'll do is we'll meet up, everyone will come, and then I'll say to them, look guys, let's all have a nice dinner, get some time. Unfortunately, though, we're gonna have to postpone it. That's the plan. But then what happened was, when I got there and I saw everybody, and I saw how excited they were, and nervous, and, the, and, and people, the people had left their jobs just to come on the eviction, I was like, nah. We're gonna have to just do it. So we just made a decision. Well, I just made a decision on the spot. <laughs> guys, guys, come, we had a little private room. I'm like, we're going ahead this month. And everyone's like, but where is everyone gonna sleep? And what about this? And, and, and what about, and Amelia was like, but I've not packed anything. What do you mean, we just. <laughs> she didn't have a suitcase. She didn't have a suitcase. What do you mean, we're just doing the full on eviction for a whole month right now. We haven't got the equipment. We haven't got the, set, the, the, the video. We haven't got the video. Um, we only, we've only got this little crappy little video. That, that's why, Camera. That's why the beginning, the footage at the beginning was a bit... Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, let's just run with it. It's crazy. Okay, so, um, top tips then. Top three tips for being a good videographer. Um, I think, well, videographer, you, you work with people. You need to make yeah. them feel oh. nice. You need to make them oh. feel nice, yeah. You need to feel them relaxed, because if you don't do that, they'll be like, uh, what's happening? So that's one. Then two, know your things. Uh, there's always something new to learn. With, with everything, whenever you think like, okay, I learn everything, you fail. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's true. But I know a third one. Go on. Um, okay. I always say this to all my videographers. Yeah. And when someone new comes on, like Darwin is new, and he was shocked at how I was telling him to do things less good. Okay. Right? Like, he'd be doing the thumbnail and... So perfectionism. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. My, 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 my philosophy is done is better than perfect. Done is the new perfect. Correct. Yeah, I love it. You know, that. just have to. Nice. Oh, it's really interesting though, because like, done is the new perfect, yes. Don't spend time making something perfect, just get it friggin' out there. Mm. But at the same time, sometimes, I think it does have to be done right. It depends on what it is. I understand what you mean. And when I started my videos, I started my YouTube channel in December 2016. And I was like coming back to the videos and okay, add more text, more transitions, make it really nice. But then I realized that it's nice for who? You know, you don't get the, to make the decision. You know, yeah. the, the person is taking the decision. Maybe they won't like it anyway. So I, I started releasing more with less being perfect, but you really switched my mind to be even more that, so. Yeah, just get it out. Yeah. I don't even see the footage before it goes out. Very rare, unless it's a financial freedom challenge or something where I'm like, I want to watch it because I'm excited, or I might be involved. Um, I might be involved sometimes in, 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 you know, how we, how we, how, how we do it because it's, you know, when you've got 40 hours of, of footage and you need to put it down into half an hour, it's like, yeah, when, wow. when you film everything, that's what happens. Yeah, and it's like, how do I know what to put in, what to leave out? And I, I, I'm really, for me, it's really important that. People can follow the story. You know, they get, they see the important things. Like, like I'll say to you, if it, if it, if it wasn't filmed, it didn't happen. Mm. Like doing a financial freedom challenge. You know, someone might say to me, or during the eviction, someone might say to me, oh, we just had a deal. And I'm like, was it filmed? Oh, well, it wasn't filmed, but we did it. I'm like, wait, it didn't happen. Mm. You know, and I think, I think, you know, some things like that I'm quite bothered about. Um, the eviction, I'm like, we need to film this, this, we need to get everything captured. But then in terms of getting it perfect, you know, it, it's an interesting one. How, how involved would you say I am in the actual video 
production side of things, generally speaking. I'm not talking about necessarily, you know, the, 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 the big um, challenges or the eviction, but just generally speaking, day to day, we just aren't very involved, not involved at all, mediocre. I would say it really depends every once in a while. I think it will depend on the video. I think it depends if uh, uh, your agenda, what things you happen on your, are happening with you. But sometimes you are even canceling things for videos. Because as I said, you understand how important that is. Um, as you said, if there are bigger projects, you'll be more involved. But that's why you're working close with us, with the videographers, because you, you want to know what's happening. You, you are on top of things. Definitely you're on top of things. What do you mean I'm canceling things for videos? I don't know if, if you have something if you have something going on, but you think that the video is more important, you know, um, you pay more attention to the video. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we, we have to put out a video every day. Every day we put a video out on YouTube. So it's hard work. It's mental. It is mental. <laughs> also as well, one of the things that some of the guys said, I don't know how you feel about this, but it's like a lot of people come up to me and they'll say, hey, you know, your YouTube videos have changed my life. Uh -huh. You know, I've, watched your, I've watched your YouTube videos as a result, I've gone and got these properties. How does it feel being able to be the person that actually edited those videos? It feels great. Every time I hear something like that, I'm like, oh. it's like, you know, being that silent hero because yeah. nobody knows you. You're behind the camera, you're editing videos and they're praising the videos and they're basically praising you because you're on videos, yeah. fair point. But you are the, you know, you have a piece of little something yeah. that you did over there and it's, it's like, ah, your videos changed my life and I'm behind the camera like, mm. Yeah, it feels That's nice. Right. It feels nice. You know what though? One of the things that I have is a lot of hidden heroes around me. You know, in every sector, with my properties, with my um, all my businesses, my accountants, my surveyors, my team, who aren't necessarily. On, and I'll say when I do, when I do my training programs, I'll be like at the end, I'll say, look, guys, um, I'm actually I have a business partner. Russell's my business partner. Oh, and also Amanda, my wife. People, people don't see a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that, you know, I'm really grateful to people like you and others, the, the hidden heroes in, in the team. Um, also, we've, you know, we've shared a lot, we've shared a lot of um, close times together, even though it's been quite a short time, just a yeah. year and a half. You came out to Uganda. Talk to me about Uganda. Um, it was really, really an eye opener for me because I was, I really love traveling. As I said, I, I love traveling, I love meeting people, I love filming all this, and it, I got this all this from this job. And thank you for bringing me to Uganda. That was my uh, first African trip. We were in the office and everybody, I remember, everybody wanted to go to Uganda. And Raf said, okay, okay, let's do, let's do that. Everybody writes on a piece of paper, two names, you know, two other people, and we just pick randomly. And, and not pick randomly, but see who has the highest score. And I got the highest score. And I just like recently joined, it was just, as I joined within a month, we went to Uganda. Yeah. And, you know, because how it happened with the Financial Freedom Challenge, how well it went with filming wise and all this, you were happy for me to go to Uganda. It was great. Um, and it was, it was really nice to see how people were welcoming you because you were already there and like, oh, thank you for the things you've done. You know, they, they were really happy to see you. So it was... It was a good week. It was really great. Another thing as well is, do you, do you remember on the way back when um, I said to you, you can either choose, you can fly business and sleep, or you can fly economy and we'll give you 500 quid. Do you not remember that? I didn't get any 500 quid. <laughs> Did you not? No, <laughs> what is this? What happened? Oh, I don't know, I fly economy. <laughs> Did we not give you the choice? No. Maybe that was another story. <laughs> You're gonna invoice me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what, uh, I think about Sergi because I remember you, you told me that you were offering him massage. Uh, or something. Yeah, I probably am thinking of Sergi. Uh, so Sergi, that's funny. For you, we didn't give. We just said you can fly the economy. <laughs> <laughs> For, <laughs> For, how did I fly economy? I didn't get. I remember it. actually. I remember what happened with you. With you, you flew economy and I flew business. Yeah. But then we bumped into each other, <laughs> and I was like. All right, mate, all right. It was a bit awkward because even on the way back, on the way back, and then uh, we checked in and we were like, all right, uh, I'm going to be in the lounge over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll be here. <laughs> have, have fun. I'll see you in Uganda. <laughs> Cheerio. Um, but Sergi, we said to him, because it depends on the circumstances when we go away. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, 
it, it's interesting. You know, it's an interesting job set up there. Yeah. You know, and, and we try and, you know, generally speaking, I, ho I, ho I hope normally I'm reasonably generous yeah. um, with, with, with different things. But um, that was a funny, a funny incident. But with Sergey, I said to him, after America, you can come with us on business or you can go economy and we'll give you 500 quid. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> now we were all knackered, like we needed to sleep. I think that was the difference. I think with Sergey, I felt really bad for him because of how tired we were at the end of the week. I was just thinking I couldn't do economy. It was a long flight, right? We were knackered. So I said, look, man, normally when staff come out and stuff, they do fly economy, but because of how it's been, you can fly economy and we'll give you 500 quid or you can come on business with us. And uh, he chose economy because he wanted the 500 quid, but then he, was, he had to have like two days off work when he got back, he was done. Um, I think that's what I said to you though. I think what I said to you is, I needed to work immediately when we got back from Uganda. We got back from Uganda. I need, I'll, get back, I'll get off a plane and I'll work. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I need to sleep, man, on the plane. You had a couple days off. Yeah? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> you did, you probably. did. If you didn't have your 500 quid, you definitely had a couple <laughs> days off. Anyway, that's my justification and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but no, it was, it was a great trip. You know, yeah, it, was. It, it was a powerful trip. And, um, you know, we, we, we visited a lot of the works that we'd done, some of the water tanks and the villages that we'd, that we, that we'd helped. Um, look at some of the schools, partnering with the government. It was a, it was, it was a really big meeting. So um, what's plans, what are the plans for you then over the, next, over the next year? What's the plan? Set up your business? Yeah, set up business, uh, start doing, getting more clients, do videos for them. So it's all like events, interviews, uh, promo videos, trailers, everything, everything. I even shot my first music video. I know. <laughs> That was a raunchy video. Crazy. That was a really raunchy hey, video. You do what the client wants, right? Well, yeah, I guess so. Hey, dude, well, listen, man, I'm, I'm totally behind you in your business. Okay. It's really strange interviewing somebody with not having a videographer behind. We should have probably got new or Amelia or someone in. But uh, anyway, dude, hey, if you like Pav, he's an awesome guy. Where's your website? How can we get in touch? Curious, like I'm curious, and then Pavel, like my name, curiouspavel.com or any social network, Curious Pavel. Curious Pavel, P A V E L dot yeah. com. Yeah. His book is on Amazon called How to Talk to Strangers. Top guy. Appreciate you so much, bro. Thank you for all your hard work. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. If not for me, do it for Pav. Peace out. See you next time. <laughs>